Hello, gemstone hunter. What if that ugly, opaque, shapeless rock, thrown to the side of a road or forgotten in the dry riverbed, were exactly where diamonds choose to hide? Well, it sounds provocative, but most people spend their entire lives looking for diamonds in the wrong rocks, hypnotized by the obvious shine and completely blind to what really matters. Nature, that old strategist, loves to confuse those who judge too quickly. While many are enchanted by beautiful crystals that tell no story, few stop to observe those dark, brittle and neglected rocks. And that's where the collective error lies. Anyone who has trained their eye knows, beauty has nothing to do with geological value. What matters is the process, the origin, the absurd pressure that shaped that rock over millions of years. When that realization hits, everything changes. The game stops being about luck and becomes about reading signs. And if this kind of knowledge is starting to make sense to you, leave a like now, because that helps the channel continue delivering content that few teach. And take this opportunity to sign up as well, because what comes next may completely change the way you see the ground you walk on every day. And this new way of seeing is only just beginning to reveal itself. Without shine, without symmetry, without any feature that would make someone stop for more than two seconds. Just an ordinary rock, the kind your foot kicks without apology and your gaze ignores without remorse. To hurried eyes, it says nothing. But the attentive mentor teaches that the silence of nature is never empty. It is laden with meaning. Since ancient times, humankind has been conditioned to associate value with what shines, with what attracts attention, with what visually imposes itself. Gold shines, a polished diamond enchants, clear crystals hypnotize. But the earth, patient and ironic, doesn't play that game. It hides its greatest secrets in what seems banal, almost irrelevant. It's like an ugly covered book forgotten on a dusty shelf. Those who judge by appearances never discover the powerful story that exists within. In geology, as in life, the obvious is often shallow. And when someone slows down, observes the texture, feels the weight of the rock in their hand, they realize that that nothing begins to tell an ancient, profound story, full of layers that are not immediately revealed. For millions of years, colossal forces have acted far below the surface, where no light reaches and no aesthetics matter. Absurd pressure, extreme heat, slow and relentless movements have shaped structures capable of protecting diamonds like true natural vaults. Kimberlites, lamproites, and other deep formations were not born to be beautiful. They were born to survive conditions that would crush any illusion of delicacy. And that is precisely why they carry such valuable clues. The wise man reminds us that understanding this requires more than curiosity. It requires humility to accept that the common eye fails. A good practical exercise is simple. The next time you are outdoors, observe what no one photographs. Dark, fragmented rocks, seemingly without aesthetic value. Ask yourself not, is this beautiful, but where did this come from? This change of question changes everything. Because when you understand that geological history is worth more than appearance, the mind begins to prepare for a greater insight. One that explains, once and for all, why diamonds choose to be born precisely where no one wants to look. The turning point begins with a fact that almost no one clearly states. Diamonds don't grow in gentle environments. They form more than 150 kilometers below the surface, where the pressure is so extreme that any notion of beauty simply ceases to exist. There, carbon is squeezed, rearranged and transformed over millions of years until it becomes one of nature's most resilient structures. When the mentor explains this, he makes a point of emphasizing that beautiful rocks are almost always shallow. Rocks associated with diamonds, however, bear the scars of a violent birth. Kimberlites and lamproites are classic examples, dark, porous, brittle, visually confusing. To those who don't understand, they look like geological debris. To those who know how to read the signs, they are rare pages from a book written in the depths of the earth. 
This is where the game changes, because the trained eye stops looking for brilliance and starts looking for history. The real plot twist lies precisely in this inversion of logic. What seems ugly, dirty or shapeless is often the biggest indication that something rare may be hidden there. In regions of South Africa, Canada and Russia, major discoveries began with rocks that were ignored for decades. They didn't attract attention, they weren't marketable, they weren't suitable as decoration. But they carried indicator minerals, unusual textures and a chemical signature that screamed deep origin to those who knew how to listen. The mentor often jokes that nature speaks softly, but speaks with precision. The problem is that most people only hear what is noisy. When someone learns to identify these silent patterns, they begin to see value where before they only saw discard. And this type of perception is not limited to geology. It begins to overflow into other areas of life. A practical example helps solidify this understanding. Imagine two rocks on the ground, one light-colored, crystalline, beautiful to the eye, the other dark, irregular, heavy, and full of fragments. The beginner will go straight for the first one. The attentive observer will not. They analyze the density, the texture, the presence of accompanying minerals such as garnets or olivine, and the surrounding geological context. This second rock, even if ugly, tells a story more consistent with diamond-forming environments. It's the same principle used by experienced geologists and prospectors in remote regions of the world. And if this type of knowledge is already making you question what you've always believed, leave a like now, because that shows that this content is opening your mind to a deeper understanding of nature. Ultimately, this revelation carries an even greater lesson. Diamonds don't choose comfort. They choose pressure. They don't choose beauty. They choose survival. And the rocks that carry them reflect exactly that. By understanding this principle, the viewer begins to realize that apparent ugliness is often a mark of authenticity. Now tell us in the comments, have you ever ignored something valuable just because it didn't seem special at first glance? This exchange of experiences strengthens the community and helps everyone see beyond the obvious. Because from here, the next step is no longer to understand why. It's to learn to recognize in practice these rocks when they appear in the real world, almost always disguised as something common. Recognizing a rock associated with diamonds doesn't require expensive equipment or a sophisticated laboratory. It requires, above all, trained attention. The mentor often says that the first filter is visual but not in an aesthetic sense. Promising rocks usually have a dark color, varying between deep green, dark brown, and almost black, in addition to an irregular fragmented texture, sometimes resembling poorly mixed natural concrete. They are rarely smooth or pretty. On the contrary, they appear broken, full of inclusions, and with a confusing appearance. This chaotic appearance is not a defect, it's a clue. It indicates a violent origin coming from great depths. When someone learns to observe this calmly, they begin to realize that ugliness has a pattern, and pattern in geology is always an invitation to investigation. The second important sign is weight and density. Many of these rocks appear small, but they are surprisingly heavy when lifted from the ground. They weigh more than they seem, and the sensation in your hand doesn't lie. A simple exercise is to compare two rocks of similar size. If one seems to pull downwards more, there is something different in its composition. Furthermore, the presence of accompanying minerals acts as a kind of secret alphabet. Reddish garnets, dark ilmenite, and greenish olivine don't guarantee diamonds, but they indicate environments compatible with their formation. This is how professionals do an initial screening in the field. If this is already clarifying your vision, leave a like now because this kind of practical detail is what separates curiosity from real understanding. The geological context of the location is the third pillar of this analysis. It's not enough to look at the rock in isolation. It's necessary to observe where it is located. Ancient riverbeds, areas with a deep volcanic history, or regions known for igneous structures are much more interesting than random terrains. A good habit is to research public geological maps before any field observation. 
something anyone can do today with just a few clicks. By cross-referencing visual information with regional context, the risk of error drops drastically. The mentor emphasizes that prospecting is like assembling a puzzle. A single piece says nothing, but several together begin to form a coherent image. And when that image appears, the eye gains confidence. Finally, there's the factor that almost no one teaches. Analytical patience. Experienced geologists and prospectors don't get excited about the first unusual rock they find. They observe several, compare them, discard them without attachment, and only move forward when the signs repeat themselves. This method avoids illusions and creates consistency. Now, it's worth reflecting on, which of these signs had you never stopped to observe before? Tell us in the comments, because your question might be exactly someone else's. This exchange strengthens collective learning and prepares the ground for the next step. The one that reveals how repeated patterns around the world led to discoveries that changed entire histories. Many of the greatest diamond discoveries began in an almost embarrassing way, with rocks ignored, discarded, or mistaken for worthless material. In different regions of the world, such as Canada and parts of Africa, accounts repeat themselves with a curious similarity. Samples considered too ugly, too dark, or too common were left accumulating dust for years until someone decided to observe them more closely. The mentor often says that the history of diamonds is not made of luck, but of silent persistence. Those who learn to identify patterns where no one else sees anything develop a rare advantage. These rocks didn't shout treasure, but whispered clues to those who knew how to listen. And it is precisely this detail that separates the curious from the true explorer. The ability to see meaning in what seems like chaos. When this type of reading becomes natural, the world ceases to be random and begins to reveal hidden structures repeated in different places and contexts. There is also a powerful symbolic aspect to these discoveries. The beauty of the diamond lies not in the rock that houses it, but in the silent history it carries. Each overlooked formation tells a tale of pressure, time, and resistance, three elements that rarely appear attractively packaged. The wise observer notes that this pattern repeats itself outside of geology. Real opportunities almost never announce themselves with fireworks. They arise discreetly, demanding a trained eye and an open mind. When someone understands this, they move a step ahead, not because they know more, but because they observe better. And this type of perception creates fertile ground for something even deeper, an internal transformation, where learning ceases to be merely technical and begins to touch on how the person perceives value, potential, and purpose, a natural hook for the next stage of this journey. At some level, everyone has ignored something because it seemed too simple, too ugly, or too common. And the mentor knows that this reaction doesn't stem from malice, but from conditioning. From an early age, our gaze is trained to seek the obvious, what stands out, what shines first. But in nature and in life, what is most valuable rarely presents itself explicitly. The despised rock becomes a perfect metaphor. On the outside, it promises nothing. On the inside, everything is possible. When someone learns to train their gaze, they are not just looking for precious stones, they are developing sensitivity to recognize potential where no one else sees it. This training begins small, with conscious choices, listening more before judging, observing patterns before deciding, questioning appearances before discarding. Little by little, this mindset changes how a person approaches opportunities, people, and even their own trajectory. The curious thing is that, just like diamonds, human potential is also born under pressure, not under applause. And when that realization hits, something reorganizes itself internally, preparing the ground for the next step, that moment when knowledge ceases to be mere reflection and demands concrete action. Now, if this way of seeing nature and life itself has already begun to change something within you, the mentor extends a direct invitation. Write in the comments, not everything that is worthwhile shines. This isn't just a pretty phrase, but a real commitment to training your gaze beyond appearances. 
This interaction strengthens the community and shows that you're part of a group that wants to learn what almost no one teaches. If this content has given you practical value and changed the way you see the world, leave a like now, because that helps this kind of knowledge continue to reach more curious people like you. And pay attention to the screen right now, the next video that's appearing. This silent plant reveals diamonds in the soil, and almost no one notices. This delves into precisely that hidden perspective of nature. Click on it now and continue this journey, because those who learn to read invisible signs are always a few steps ahead, and what you discover there may completely change the way you observe the ground you walk on. See you later, Gemstone Hunter.